Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, and welcome to worship the Light Community Church on this morning. Family and friends that are with us virtually, we welcome you, God. We welcome you. We welcome you for joining us this morning because we serve an awesome God and we're here to worship him on this morning. Amen. 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 We thank you for joining us because you could be any place else, but you took this time this morning to be here with us online and we are grateful that you are here on this first Sunday in July. And for that, we say thank you. And hallelujah and amen. And at this time, we're going to pray and open up our service on this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you on this morning, God, for just meeting us at this place this morning, God. God, we thank you, God, for just keeping us at a place of peace, God, at a time where things may be a little uneasy and unrest, God. But we just thank you, God, because you are a God that does everything on purpose, God. And God, we thank you for what you've already done. We thank you for the things that you're about to do. We thank you for the things that we've seen this week that we never thought we would see in our lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So for that, God, we say thank you, God. Thank you, and God, we ask you to continue to cover us, continue to cover the Light Community Church, God, and allow us to continue to be that shining light in our community, God, and able to bless people, God, and to be able to do your work in your way, God. And God, we just honor you and we love you and we thank you, God. Thank you. God, we just thank you for blessing our lives, God. We thank you for waking us up this morning, God, because you didn't have to do it. But, God, you chose to do it, God. So we thank you for choosing us for a time in this, God. And, God, we just love you and we honor you and we bless you. And it's in your son's name, God, that we say amen, amen, and amen. And at this time, we're going to begin praise and worship with Sister Roz Christian from Cornerstone United Holy Church. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord, Light Community Church. Can we give God some praise this morning? Can we give God the worship that he deserves? Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name. Hallelujah. How many know that our hallelujah belongs to God? Hallelujah. Everything within us, we will give God praise for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. Mm -hmm. My hallelujah belongs to you. Mm -hmm. My hallelujah belongs to you. Oh, yes. My hallelujah belongs to you. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah, yeah. My hallelujah belongs.
give God praise in the house. Hallelujah. 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 Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You deserve it. And God, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rod. That was such a blessing to us on this morning. My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, at this time, it is our offering time. And as we prepare to read our offering litany, I just want to share with you right quickly um, what a blessing it is to give. Amen. Because at a time where we're not in the actual church building, amen. the church still has things that we have to do to be the church. Amen. 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 If I give my own quick personal testimony, um, I got to the point that I had to uh, set up my offering to come out automatically. Uh -huh. And because as a leader in a, a, a leader in a home, sometimes I would... Uh, you know, when you get behind, you feel like it's your obligation, your job to make things better and fix things. But you can't shortchange God. Right. And so by me setting it up to come out automatically, I have seen God do things in my life at this point that I could have never yeah. imagined. Yeah. And I thank God for that and for that opportunity. So you have to use what works for you That's and right. figure out what works for you That's to right. continue to bless God and continue to bless the kingdom. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I want to read our offering litany at this time, which you will see on the screen. And we will read together, and it reads, According to God's word, I cheerfully give my tithes and offering today. I give my best to the best to advance God's kingdom here on earth. I sow bountifully, and I will reap bountifully. By faith, I believe God will open up the windows of heaven and pour me out blessings that I won't have room enough to receive. And he will rebuke the devourer for my sake. I believe God will supply all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. Because I am a cheerful, bountiful giver, I have more than enough in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And before we, uh, Sister Roz, come back with our selection, I want to share with you ways that you can give financially to support TLCC. The first way you can give is through text giving. You can text the amount that you choose to give to 804-312-5335. And the second way is EasyTithe. Using your smartphone's app store, download the EasyTithe app and search for the Light Community Church or give online at the website listed on the screen. The third way is Givelify. Using your smartphone's app store, download the Givelify app and search the Light Community Church or give online at the website you see on the screen. So give by mail. You can mail your checks and money orders to the Light Community Church, 601 Azalea Avenue, Richmond, Virginia, 23227. And at this time, amen, Sister Roz will be coming back with another selection. Amen.
first Sunday at the Light Community Church, we celebrate communion. Communion is a time to remember, and it's also a time to celebrate. We remember that Jesus lived for 33 years, and he died a brutal death. He hung on an old rugged cross. We remember that Jesus was the only one who was all God and all man, the only one who could be the ultimate sacrifice to die for our sins. We remember that he was spat on and we remember that there was a crown of thorns pressed on his head, but that's not how the story ends. And that's why we can celebrate. Because on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead with all power in his hands. The Bible records that at the Last Supper, Jesus sat with his disciples and he shared a meal with them and he took bread and he broke it and he said, this is my body which is broken for you. Then he took the cup and he poured it and he said, this is my blood which is shed for you. And today at home, with your cracker, with your juice, whatever it is that you have, the Bible reminds us that whenever we do this, even in 2020, whenever we do this, we do it in remembrance of Jesus Christ. So I hope your family's gathered around. I hope that you are somewhere where you can sit and just reflect on the goodness of Jesus Christ. Reflect on the goodness that he loved us so much in the midst of our own stuff that he died on an old wooden rugged cross for our sins. So today we come to this table. I want to pray over whatever it is you have at home. We're going to pray for what we have here, these sacraments that we'll share together in communion. Father, we just thank you now for this juice we thank you for this cracker whatever it is that folks have at home to share in communion we thank you for it for you're able to supply so father as we take these material things now we pray that they will have spiritual significance in our lives that we might be renewed in our faith that we might remember how much you love us that you sent your only begotten son to die, that whosoever would believe it in him would not perish but have everlasting life. We thank you, O oh God, and we ask right now that you would bless these elements. In Jesus' name, amen. We ask that you would take now your cracker, your wafer, whatever you have at home, and when we eat together, let's be reminded that God is our source and that God is everything that we need. Let us eat together. Now take your juice, which is a reminder of the blood of Jesus that was shared for our sins. Regardless of what color you are, regardless of what race, your age, the blood of Jesus covers us all. Let us drink together. And let the whole church, whether you're in the building or whether you're at the church at home, let the whole church say, Amen. 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 The word for today comes from the book of Philippians chapter 3. The book of Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14. Philippians chapter 3 verses 12 to 14. Just a few verses. I believe this is from the New International Version of the Bible. And it reads as follows. If you can see it, you can read along. Not that I have already obtained all this, or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, 
But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. And I just want to use for a message on today, on this first Sunday of July, press on, press on. Uh, would you pray with me? Father, thank you now for this opportunity to share what you've given to me for your people. We pray that this word would encourage us and uplift us in the season that we're currently navigating. God, I'm a vessel that you can use for your glory, so I ask that you would anoint me afresh from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. God, speak through me. I don't just pray for myself, God, for I pray for those who are listening to this word, God, that we might be encouraged and we might be better after being together today. As always, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer in Jesus' name. Amen. Press on. Back in 2016, First Lady Michelle Obama addressed a standing room only crowd at the D Democratic Convention. During her emotional speech, she made a statement that eventually was coined as a catchphrase. As she gracefully addressed critics and naysayers and oppressors, she encouraged us with these words, when they go low, we go high. Those words have since traveled over the country, been printed on t-shirts, and have sparked conversations in many different circles. See, she wasn't talking about our altitude when she said go high. She was speaking about our attitude and our aptitude in the face of adversity. In her own way, she was guiding the nation and nudging us to press toward higher standards even when it seems like folk expect so little of us. This statement is about our humanity and morality, not about status or superficial accomplishments. And it's important for us to consider today where we stand and what we're aiming for, especially in this season in American history. On this 4th of July weekend, most of our nation has already been awakened to the fact that Independence Day doesn't look the same for everyone. Freedom didn't look the same for everyone. Being named as free doesn't mean living free. Matter of fact, the original July 4th wasn't Independence Day for everyone. Some were still in chains, some were still shackled, and even today, in 2020, many are still fighting to understand what freedom and independence really looks like. In other words, we're still pressing toward that high calling. We press on. The writer of our text for today is Apostle Paul. He's expressing his desire to press toward the high calling of Jesus Christ. He's not talking about material things, but he's talking about spiritual substance. Paul's not talking about a prize that you can buy with money, but a prize that you can only receive and I can only receive from God. That's the high calling that we need to be seeking. Not a pat on the back from people, but a well done from God. But it's going to take some work, y'all, for us to get that because this prize requires us to not only do something different, but to be something different. We have to be holy. We have to be peculiar. We have to be in the world, but not of the world. You see, it takes more effort and discipline to be what God wants us to be than to do what we can do in our own strength. The word press. Press is a kingdom word. Press is a word for sacrificial preparation. The press, the press, is that sacrifice that you're willing to make in order to meet God's expectations. It's the smashing and the pressure that takes us from where we are to where God wants us to be. It's the process that makes what's in you come out of you, just like the grape is pressed to make wine and the olive is pressed to make oil. The press that you go through will prepare you to be a blessing to someone else. That pressing place, y'all, is that time when you feel disconnected, but that's when you pray your best prayer. Mm -hmm. It's that time when you need to be ministered to, but some kind of way you feel compelled to help somebody else. The press is the place where you want to hide out, but God positions you to stand out. Mm -hmm. It's when you didn't feel like raising up a shot of victory, but you pressed into his presence and you still got your breakthrough. Mm -hmm. I just stopped by this morning with this little Sunday school lesson just to encourage you. God wants us to press on. This is not the time to give up. Right. We have a part to play in our own success story. Matter of fact, we just said it. God sent Jesus Christ to die for our sins so that we might have an abundant life. But can I caution you now? A lot of us might be missing out because we're giving up too soon. Mm -hmm. We're giving up on church too soon. 
We're giving up on God too soon. Y'all don't bail out because of your burdens. Right. Don't sit on the curb while the race is still going on. We got to keep on pressing. Paul gives us some motivation on how to press in our text today. And I'm just going to drop off this mail and I'll be on my way. Because he wrote this encouragement to the church at Philippi. And I believe it's going to help us today. One reason that you want to keep pressing on is because God has more in store. God has more in store. Paul starts out in verse 12 by saying he knows he doesn't have it all together. I'll tell you what it says in the text. We read it. He says, not that I've obtained all this. Matter of fact, he hasn't accomplished all that has been ordained for him. And the place that he finds himself is not his final destination. And by this statement, he lets us know that he believes that there's something better and more in store. That's good news for us today because this is just one moment in time and there's something more in store for all of us. But see, the enemy would have us believe that this is all it's going to ever be. You have to know that there's more in store. And God will either answer our prayers with a yes, a no, or not yet. And I just dare you to shout on your not yet. Because not yet doesn't mean no, it means it just hasn't come yet. Can anybody praise God on the not yet? You don't have the bins yet, but come on and bless them with your bus pass. You don't have the house yet, but come on and praise them in your apartment. You don't have the money that you want yet, but can you thank them that it's on the way? Somebody just needs to bless God for all the not yet that are still on the way. You don't have to wait until you're great getting up more, and we can expect something more in store on this side of glory. Just think about that for a moment, and then type it in your timeline. There's more in store. Uh, if you keep pressing, God can still bless you abundantly. You can move from broke to blessed, from disappointed to delivered, from hopeless to Holy Ghost filled, from being a mess to a miracle. God can bring you up and promote you even when it looks like society is trying to pull you down. Because the truth is, promotion comes from God. Not from Verizon, not from the school system, not from the hospital, not from the insurance company, not from wherever you are. God is our source. And God is the one that can move us and promote us from glory to glory. Matter of fact, the Bible says don't despise the humble or small beginning because God is still able to do great things. Look at the writer of this text. Paul started out far away from the plan of God. But after he saw the light, he became an apostle and one of the most prominent writers of the New Testament. Y'all remember Joseph? Joseph started out as the one who was despised by his own brothers and sold into slavery. But God moved him from the pit to the palace. Hallelujah. Then there was my boy David. David started out as a shepherd boy. His own family had ruled him out for having any potential for greatness. But he was anointed as the king in front of his brothers. And now he's known as a one who had a heart after God. Somebody needs to get an old school Norman Hutchins anointed and declare a move of God is on the way. So remember, there's more in store. But then the next thing I want you to remember is that we all have to get past our past. Get past your past. Paul writes it in the second part of verse 13, Minister Logan. He says, one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what's ahead. Yeah. That's how he's able to keep pressing. He's like that runner that is straining his neck to make it across the finish line before the opponent. Paul is focused and determined on one thing, which is getting that prize and that high calling. And I want to talk to folks who have a past that you don't like. Don't let stuff that's behind you trip you up. I'm going to say it again. Don't let something that's behind you trip you up. Most of the time when we trip, it's because we're walking forward and we trip on something that's ahead of us. But don't let something that's behind you trip you up. I love the song by Jonathan McReynolds and Molly Music that's called I'm Moving On. My favorite line says, I know my real view can't compare to what God would do in my life. And then he says, I'm forgetting what's behind me. I have finally decided I'm moving on. Let's be real about it, y'all. All the people that's trying to be fake, go ahead and turn the off button on. But I want to tell you, for the honest people, we all have some black spots on our life's report. 
Nobody's past is squeaky clean. I know we act holy when we come into the church house, but we all have done some things that we are not so proud of. We all have some skeletons in our closets. Everybody being quiet now. I said we all got some skeletons in our closets. At one point, maybe you were the one who lied or stole stuff or fornicated or cheated on a test. Maybe back in the day, you were the bully or the neighborhood drunk or the one who ran and tossed through relationships like tissues. Maybe you were the instigator or the gossiper or the one who couldn't be trusted. Um, and some folks even today are dealing with regrets in this season. They're dealing with questions about their past. Questions like why they didn't finish school or why didn't they save more money or why didn't they keep their credit score high. Listen, we all have made some mistakes. We all have at least one woulda, coulda, shoulda story. We all have sinned and fallen short of his glory, but we can't stay stuck back there. Because if we stay stuck back there, we lose the ability to press on. Forget about yesterday. Learn from those mistakes. Move forward. Because the Bible says when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become new creatures. And behold, all things are new. And I want to pause right here and let you know it's not just about your past failures, but be careful that you don't get stuck in your past successes either. Because right. right. some folk are still bragging about stuff you did in 1983. Right. Some people are still telling stories about your accomplishments back in the day. I know you were homecoming queen in 1977. You went on a missionary trip back in the 90s, but I can hear God singing like an old Janet Jackson song, What Have You Done For Me Lately? Oh, Don't stay stuck in your past. Forget what's behind. Press toward the high calling. So we press on number one because there's something more in store. We press on number two by getting past our past. And then we can press on number three. This is your motivation because payday is still on the way. Right. Payday is coming. It's right here in the text, y'all. In verse 14, Kevin Paul says he presses on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Paul is talking about that prize. He's referencing the prize that the people would win after they ran in the Greek foot races. That's like the Olympics. Uh -huh. It's like our Olympics track and field edition. That's what he's really talking about. He's saying runners will compete and they will get a prize at the end if they won the race. And matter of fact, when I looked it up, I realized that the way they ran races back then was different than what our Olympics look like now. They had a road that they were run on that was about 230 yards long and 30 yards wide. At the end of it, there was a tall, um, they would make a 180 degree turn. It was not an oval shape. It was a sharp turn that you would have to make around this post. And you can see that there's a high risk if you're making a sharp turn of bumping into each other just trying to get back to the other side. So winning under those conditions was indeed a big accomplishment. But in the end, there was a prize that was worth it. Beloved, I just want you to remember that this race is worth it. In the end, we will win. God wants to accomplish something amazing through you and through me, but we've got to endure this race of righteousness until the end. Don't give up. Just press on. And we tell our kids all the time that it's some things that you enjoy in life and other things that you endure. But in the end, make sure that whatever you're chasing is going to be worth it. And I watch some of these young people who are working for the summer in this heat. And I realize that they're working for one thing. It's not because they like it. Some of them might be standing outside that Chick-fil-A. Come on, no, Alec, like you don't go through the Chick-fil-A. They're standing out there to take your order in the heat. Some of them are pushing carts back inside the Target or the grocery store. Some are working in family businesses, doing construction, and all manner of things. It might be hot. Matter of fact, they might not even like it. But they know that at the appropriate time, payday is coming. And because payday is coming, Coming, they're willing to take the heat. They're willing to do the work. They're willing to press on. And that's a good word for all of us on today. Payday is coming, y'all. It might not come in a check. It might not come in direct deposit. But God has a prize in store for everyone who's willing to press. And yeah, we might have to endure some temporary discomfort. But in the end, I promise, we're going to be better than the way we went in. 
and the way he could have ever imagined. Now some of my ladies will understand this story because when I was a little girl, my mama used to press my hair with a straightening comb. Uh, brothers, thank God that you didn't have to go through this experience because at my house, on Liston Lane in Portsmouth, Virginia, it was a whole day experience. The cold was hot, the grease would melt on my head, I would squirm and twist, and I'm gonna tell you, I've been popped with a brush more than one time in my life. As a child, I didn't have a patience to sit still and wait until the pressing process was complete. Matter of fact, if I be honest, I really wanted to go outside and play. I would rather be with my friends, but my mama had an end result in mind. And even though I didn't know what it was going to look like, if I could just sit there long enough to go through the press, then I'd come out better. Because see, what she was trying to do was smooth out my rough edges. Lord have mercy. She was trying to get me presentable for church on Sunday. Y'all not saying nothing. She was going to later add some bows and some curls and some platukas and some barrettes and fancy things to add to my outfit. And I must admit that I did not like the process of going through the press. But if I just held on through the heat, if I could just hold on through the burn ears, then she done burned my ears uh, a couple times by accident, I'm sure. Uh, but if I could just hold on a little while longer when the process was done, I promise you I looked in the mirror and I smiled because I looked better than I did before I sat in the chair. And that's what I believe God wants us to do today. If we can just endure the temporary discomfort, if we can just get past our temporary hang up. If we can just keep moving forward in spite of everything that we see, we will see some good in the end. Sit on down in the master's chair. Get your stuff hooked up because in the end, you're going to look at yourself and know that it was all worth it. And if you don't believe me, I brought a few witnesses and then I'm going to take my seat. There was a woman with the issue of blood and she told me to tell you that the press is worth it. She had spent all her money on doctors who couldn't help her. But one day she heard Jesus was passing by and she pressed her way through the crowd just to touch the hem of his garment and with one touch she was made whole. A come here sister with the alabaster jaw she pressed her way past the altar of popular opinion broke her jaw in front of everyone and poured the oil on Jesus and when he defended her in front of everybody in the room she knew that the press was worth it. Come here Jesus our Savior and Lord he understands the press. He was scrutinized and criticized by people who didn't believe. He was praised by folks who shouted Hosanna one day and crucified him on another. But he kept on pressing. They pressed a crown of thorns on his head. He had nails pressed in his hands and feet. He had a sword pressed through his side. He suffered, but he pressed through it. He bled, but he pressed through it. He died on the old ragged cross, but he pressed through the walls of death. And I know that right now he lives. And somebody needs to get excited that because he lives, we can press on a little bit further. A song says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone because I know, you know, we know, they know that he holds my future and life is worth the living just because he lives. That's my encouragement for you today from the word of God. Just press on. Keep on pressing. There's a higher calling. Don't get distracted by the stuff that's low because when they go low, we go high. There's a high calling and all of us can get there. If we just press on, come on, give God your best praise right there. <laughs> That's the word of God for the people of God on this first Sunday of July 2020. And our worship leaders already shared with us that we've seen some amazing things this week. I was thinking when I saw the monument coming down. Last week I preached a message that said the walls are coming down. And I talked about how God wanted everything that was going to afflict us to come down so that we can go in and get everything that God had promised us. And I thought about that today as I looked and saw what was going on with the monument. So we just want to take a moment now to invite you to be a part of God's family. If you've never invited Jesus Christ to come into your life, we invite you now to just pray a simple prayer and ask Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Admit that you're a sinner. All of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But there is a Savior. 
that can save us from the penalty of our sin. And his name is Jesus Christ. And a simple prayer, by just confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, the Bible says that you shall be saved. It may be out there listening and you don't have a church home. And God is prompting you and pressing you to be a part of this church family. We invite you to connect with us. You can call up to the church and if the Holy Spirit is guiding you, we'd love to have you a part of our virtual family. You can call 804-308-1009 and let us know what the Lord is saying to you and we'll direct you further from there. I just ask right now that you just bow with me in a word of prayer before we have our benediction and our closing confirmation. Father, we just thank you for this word, this reminder that we can still press on. Father, we pray right now for those who feel like they're far away from you. We know that by your spirit, you can draw them in, draw them close, hold them tight. You can bring them to a place that will give them the comfort that they need. For everyone who's been with us doing this service, God, you already know every household that is represented. We pray that you would bless, bless, bless. And God, until we can come together to worship again, we pray that you would continue to give us the strength to press on. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, and we give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Minister Logan is going to share our benediction and our closing confirmation as we end service on today. Amen. And we thank God for the message and the messenger today. Amen. And I pray that at any point during the week as you go through life's trials and tribulations that you remember to press on. Amen. Amen. We're going to close our service as we always do with our closing benediction which may be on the screen. And we will read together. And it reads, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can act so think. According to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. And our closing confirmation. I live abundantly. I love unconditionally. I shine wherever I go by the grace of God. Amen. And go in peace. God bless you.